G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I'm covering a video about how to batch add shared parameters to multiple families at the same time in a folder. So this actually follows on from a previous tutorial that I've done about adding shared parameters to families in Revit 2020 and Dynamo 2.3. So this is a sort of an expansion of the workflow because I've actually had requests in the past for people to ask how do you apply the same workflow to multiple folders and families at the same time. Um, so we've, we've got a shared parameter file already. Um, if you need to build one yourself, I have some tutorials on my channel about shared parameter files. Otherwise, um, feel free to continue on from the last video if you're following already. Um, as well as that, we've already added parameters to one family. If you don't have the script available, um, feel free to download it from my GitHub, um, which will contain all the scripts that I've built recently, including this one. Um, but I guess we're gonna look at using a folder structure. So in this case, I've just got a bunch of families that I've just copied over a whole bunch of casework families. At the moment, none of them contain the shared parameters that we want to add. Uh, it's just got standard out of the box parameters. We want to apply multiple parameters at the same time to multiple families. So we're going to be using a process called background open and background close. So a lot of users probably haven't seen this before if you haven't used Dynamo or C Sharp. But Revit can open files in the background, including projects, even central files, and do things to them without you seeing them. Um, so we're going to use a background process. So we're going to be using Orchid again, which is great for processing families. This time we're going to be getting some directory contents, and specifically we're going to be opening the families and closing the families using these open in background nodes. So ideally you'll be using Dynamo 2.3 today, um, following on from my last tutorial. But without further ado, let's get started. Um, so I'm just going to jump straight into Revit and straight into Dynamo. Because because we're not technically opening, uh, operating upon an open Revit file. So you don't really want to have any of the families open that you're going to do things to. So I'll just close this here. And we're going to start with the script that we finished at last time. So this one essentially took an Excel file, it processed some data, we processed all the parameter data, and used it to push the current family uh, in, in with a whole bunch of parameters. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this document current node because now we want to feed in a whole set of documents. I'm going to freeze this node. I might just freeze my Excel data for now as well and save. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a directory path using, uh, actually, no, sorry, just directory path. I'm just going to path to my test folder where all my families are located. And then we're going to be using the directory contents node. So I'll just look for directory contents. And it's just this one here from the orchid package. So we're going to feed in our directory path. We need a, a search string and you can do a deep search if you want to go into all the subfolders as well. Today I'm just going to be going into one subfolder, but obviously you could do an entire library at the same time using the deep search function. So I'm just going to go, uh, I'm going to be looking for a wildcard character. So star dot RFA. So sort of like searching in Windows, essentially. And I'll just say false to a deep search. And I'll just connect those together. Okay, so that's pretty much our directory. So if I run this, we'll get all of our files in that directory. This is what we're gonna feed into our background open process. So we're gonna just, we'll, we'll just jump into Orchid itself. Um, I'll see if I can find the, the document, document open node. Can't seem to find it. I'll just go open background. Ah, oh, there it was. Background open. So I believe that this is it here. Yeah, so document background open. It's buried in here somewhere. Um, probably in the, the core or the application section. But it's, it, this is the one from Orchid. Um, so I'm just going to connect these up here. But the first thing I'm going to do is just freeze this because I don't want to open all these files here. Otherwise, I'll have to reopen Revit or close all those files using Dynamo. So I'm going to unfreeze my Excel data first. So what I'm going to do is just get a watch node and I'm just going to explain the logic of how we're going to control our data in the add shared parameter node. So first thing I'll need to path to the right file. So I'll get my input file or run. So at the moment you can see we've got a list of parameters sitting at level two and level one is each parameter value respectively. And each of these lists is in this structure. 
we're going to want to read all of these lists at level two because we want to apply the entire list of data to each respective document that we're opening. The documents we're opening are of a similar structure. So each document sits at level one. So for each document at level one, we want to apply all the parameters at level two. So this is where we have to come in and add some level data here. So we're going to work with the family document at level one. And then for each of those, we're going to apply the sublists at level two. And this should essentially apply each set of parameters to each document. Otherwise, you'd find this wouldn't work. So we're going to be opening these documents and feeding them in. I'll just get rid of this watch node. What we're going to need to do then is we're going to need to get our file to wait because our data needs to process through here before we close the files. So we're going to have to use what's called a pass-through node. So there is a pass-through node in the clockwork package. So feel free to just go for pass-through. What I'm going to do in this case is just call on a code block and I'm just going to type in pass-through. It can be any variable name and wait for, again, any variable name as a list and then the element of, or the index of zero. So we're gonna pass through this data, but we're waiting for this data. And what a pass through node does is it says, until I have all my inputs, I don't let my data move forward. So we're gonna pass through our documents, but we're gonna wait for our parameter node. And then once we have these documents, we're gonna pass them through so that we can close the documents. So I'm just gonna cat about to walk across my keyboard here. He loves walking across my keyboard. Okay, so, uh, a little bugger. <laughs> All right, so I think I might need to look up awkward close. I do find that the, the searching functions are quite difficult in Dynamo as of late. They don't seem to be anywhere near as effective as they used to be. Instead, I guess I'll look for, I'll look for it in the actual, the actual um, files themselves. Gosh, they're hard to find these days. I tried document.close. I'll type it in exactly as it is. I believe this is the one. Cool, this is the one. So I'll just double check I've got the right one using Monocle. Just go to my package usage dog and annotate my nodes. Great, so I've got the awkward, awkward one there. I'm just gonna feed through my documents to close and I'm gonna say, I do wanna save them. So we're gonna run the script all in one. But essentially, it's going to collect all the files. It's going to process them like it did before, but at different levels. It's going to then pass through the documents once it's finished, and then it'll close and save the documents. So let's go and run this beast. Um, I'm just going to freeze or unfreeze. Then I'll unfreeze this node. And what I might do is just reopen my script just to refresh it. So what's going to happen now is you'll notice that Dynamo will start spinning. So it's essentially opening up all those files now. So this is what the hourglass is basically doing now. Uh, I think what should usually happen after that is it should typically um, should stop should stop using the hourglass eventually and that's when you know it's finished loading all the files. Um, in this case, it seems like it's just giving me an hourglass. There we go. So now it's opening up all the files. You can see that it's sort of, the ribbon's sort of flickering a bit and each time it's doing that, it's opening a file. Um, in that case, I think it was actually closing the files. So it must have skipped that sort of graphic, but usually that's what it looks like when it opens up files. So what you can see here is we have all our backup files. So what I might do is just do a search for dot zero zero. Okay, I can't, can't do that. I just wanna get rid of all my backup files so I can just look at the families themselves. Great. So let's just open up one of these families. And there you go. We can see we have all our parameters added. I'll just grab one from the middle, just to prove that it's sort of worked its way through them. And there you go, it's got all the parameters, and let's just get the one at the end. Great, so you can see we've just batch processed all those files using a script. So the levels are really critical to make that workflow work. So hopefully that sort of makes sense, that the level logic that I applied there. You will note that you do get some warnings in the script. I, I believe that they're there seems to be an error when it runs through this node multiple times where it gets confused um, at the end. It seems to expect to want to do everything and then report everything all at once, but obviously it's doing multiple files, so it doesn't have the chance to. Um, so don't worry too much about that. It still seems to work. Anyway, that's the workflow, so pretty powerful. Um, the script that I've built today will be on my GitHub, um, available at the link you can see here by the time this video is released. Um, so hopefully you find that helpful. 
Um, I make videos two to three times a week, um, typically typically two times a week. So if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And um, hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.